Hello and welcome. My name is Diet, and thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Today I'm going to be hand making paper. As it currently stands right now, I'm not ready to invest in a higher quality printer. So one way that I could offer better quality is to change the paper. I've always wanted to learn how I can recycle used paper into new paper. I have found many online resources, so it's time to do some experimenting. My end goal here is to try and create a page which I can print my artwork on using my current printer. Another aspect I can change is to switch to an A4 size versus the typical 8.5 by 11 letter size. So I managed to find an A4 size Declan mold on Amazon which I felt was reasonably priced. With the $6 shipping it came to $29.27 Canadian. If you're interested in trying this for yourself there are many tutorials on how to make your own mold and deckle and several online sellers if you want one that's already fabricated. Buyer beware though, in some listings the sizes are misrepresented. So pay close attention to the size before clicking that purchase button. I almost got fooled a few times. Uh, make sure it meets the size requirement that you're looking for. This kit came with a hinge mold and deckle in A4 size, two sheets of mesh, which are the same as the window screens, two sheets of cloth similar to the blue jay cloths, a sponge, and a pack of dried flowers. Additionally, I went to the dollar store and picked up a roasting tin. To start with, I'm recycling old printouts. This is typical printer paper with printer ink and pen. Because this is my first time ever creating handmade paper, I want to do a controlled experiment to see how many pages I need to pulverize to get the results I'm looking for. So the first page I used three recycled papers, in the second page I used four recycled papers, and in the third page I used five recycled papers, so spoil alert. <laughs> the next steps are to rip it, blend it, sift it, and lift it. I discovered that this roasting pan is just way too small. It's too difficult to get my hands around the edges of the frame to sift, and it's also not deep enough, so I'm going to be switching to a larger tub, lesson learned. As you can see here, I was also struggling with the pulp a little bit, but eventually kind of figured out how it works. After sifting the pulp, I laid it flat onto the provided cloth and sponged out the water. This is definitely not as easy as I thought as it looks. I've discovered that it's really not something you can machine through. It takes time and patience to sift. The pulp has a blue tint, presumably because this was previously used paper that had pen and printer ink on it but after letting these pages dry, the color faded quite a bit.
I didn't press these pages at all so they didn't sit flat. Um, thought I would give the old iron a try and see what impact that would have, which was really not much of an impact at all. Plus, I hate ironing anyways. Likely, the pages need to be slightly damp for this to make any difference, so I'm really not going to worry too much about this for now. These pages look great, but they're much thicker than I really wanted. They have a weight that's similar to cardstock. I love the texture, but it's just probably way too much for my printer to handle. I'm glad I did this as a controlled experiment because three pages is just too many to achieve the result that I'm after. I want a softer paper. Holding these up to the light, you can see just how thick they are. The lighter areas of the first page were spots that I thought would have had a hole in them because I didn't really see the paper pulp that was sitting there as I was pulling it from the water. I used my fine liners and made notes about the differences between each page for future reference. Again, the texture of these pages is a little too much for fine liners, but this could still be great for painting or charcoal or pastel work and of course collaging. Overall, this was a good start, but I'm going to try again and see if I can create something that will work on my printer. I wanted to create several more pages this time, so I found an old pillowcase and divided this up to use. This is one made of cotton and polyester, so I don't know what impact that would have on the final outcome, but I want to experiment with it anyways. I must say there is something terribly satisfying about ripping linen. It's harsh around the edges, but it, it'll do. This time before I started, I went onto YouTube and looked for methods to create a thinner, softer paper. I'm ripping up approximately 12 to 15 pages, and I'm going to soak this paper overnight this time before I blend it. I don't know if using boiling water versus straight from the tap makes any difference, but I was making tea anyway, so why not give it a try? The water turned pink. I'm guessing, again, this is from the ink spreading into the water. However, I'm still going to reuse this water as not to be wasteful just for experimental purposes. This time, I added a little more water and blended for about 10 to 15 minutes. To make softer paper, the pulp needs to be blended well. This time, I noticed tiny black flecks floating to the surface of the water. At first, I thought it was an issue with the blender grinding, but now I'm certain that this is the ink that's separated from the paper. I didn't see this occur in the first experiment, so this could be either from using the boiling water to soak or because I blended extensively more than I did last time. This time I'm also using a storage tub. I thought this was going to be too big for what I needed, but as it turns out while I was working at it, it just ended up being exactly what I needed. I added about six parts hot water, enough to raise the water level to a comfortable working depth. This wasn't enough, so I did end up adding about four more parts water. In total, I made 12 sheets, and that took about two hours to work on, including all the failed attempts as well.
I laid them flat to dry for the rest of the night and the next day. The pages were still quite damp on the second day, so I've hung them up to dry a little faster. Next to the window and baseboard heat, it took like an hour to dry. Oh boy, the majority of these pages turned out way too thin, similar to the weight and texture of paper towels, um, but the kind that you'd find in like public washrooms, those kind of paper towels. There are a few good ones here, and one in particular which I would consider to be the best page of the bunch, so I'm going to try my luck with this one and see how well it works with my printer. As I mentioned before, the goal here is to essentially maximize the quality of my output without investing above and beyond what's practical at this stage. So let's go through some of the final results here. As it turns out, I was not recording the audio from this, so I have to do this in voiceover in editing. So here is the original artwork that I'm trying to reproduce. This first iteration is just a direct color copy, photocopy of the birds. This next one is a scan that I did of the bird, which I pulled into Photoshop. And I, as it printed, as you can see, it also printed the background to try and color match. And then on the opposite side, I ran it through the printer again just to try and figure out what was going on with the color. Because as you can see, the blue specifically is kind of, it's really more of a purple instead of the original blue color that you're seeing. Now there's a couple of reasons for this. Obviously, you can, you can see the big difference in the color of the paper itself. So I'm already at a disadvantage of trying to color match this. But on top of that, it does appear that it seems to print out very heavy on the magenta. So I'm gonna try and adjust some of the printer settings to see what I can do to try and get this more true to the color of the original. The other problem I see as well is that the quality really just isn't there. The scan, I did the scan, um, at a very large DPI and then I scaled it down in Photoshop and printed it out so it really should be uh, of a decent quality and it seems very blurry so I don't know exactly if that's because of the paper itself or because of the color issue um, so I, I ha definitely have to keep pushing at it and, and troubleshooting different settings to see how I can try and correct this. And so this is why there are so many different printouts of this. So this next one, I actually wanted to set this up as if it were a printout that I would actually consider using. And I ran it through with the printer paper first because I was having trouble running the handmade paper through the printer. It wasn't grabbing and it was constantly getting stuck as you can see in this next page. Um, it only printed out part of the bird, it didn't print out the whole thing. Um, because of the issue that I was having with this being very uh, magenta, very red, I decided to try altering the magenta channel and dialing it back to about 50% of the saturation of that magenta plate to see if maybe I could color correct this manually. Um, and like I don't know if it's an issue with my printer or if it's an issue with the color profiling that I have set up in Photoshop. So this is why there's so many printouts. I'm trying different settings just to see if it's having any sort of effect on the final outcome um, and that if I can try and get rid of this this terrible reddish hue on everything. So the second printout I did of this one, instead of changing the magenta plate, I altered the cyan and yellow plates to 50% increase and this just completely saturated the 
page with ink and um, while it's the blacks are nice and black um, it it's too saturated that it looks like marker bleeds all over the plate page essentially which I mean is I'm sure it's fine for you know if this were a drawing that was done in say marker then this might be a perfect application for that but this is a watercolor uh, image so I don't think this lends well for this so then I ran a couple more tests I tried a couple different things and I realized that the print head was getting really streaky so as you can see I uh, I had to run the printer head cleaning tool which outputted the colors so then uh, this next iteration I decided well okay let's the, the page color is obviously incorrect my printer paper is a bright white and the handmade paper has a very cool temperature it's very blue and the watercolor the original is very warm and it's almost a cream and I thought maybe if I emulated that with the Photoshop file that would help add the color that's turning it red maybe give it a little more blue I printed that out which was quite f fun to realize that I could do a bleed on the page I've never been able to do that before with my home printer um, I didn't think that home printers were capable of doing bleeds but apparently it is possible and I did do it in this case you can see that the the background color flows right over to the edge of the page um, and so it looks like the page was actually this color when in fact it is the same as the other ones it's that bright white um, with a background color applied to it so I used the background hex value for cream or at least what they say the hex value for cream color is and it was the right uh, hue but I think the value was a little too strong so I printed it out a second time and the second time I printed it out with about 50% uh, opacity on that which is tremendously better and it's much closer to the original you can see I'm still having that same problem with the the blues and that orange not really being orange it looks more of a red on the second one that I did here with the lighter background um, the first image in the yellow level settings I increased the saturation by 50% and in the green level settings I also increased the saturation by 50% but on the magenta settings I decreased by 50% just to see if maybe I can get rid of that that purpley blue color and, and get it more true to the original it doesn't look terrible but it's not it's not what I'm looking for and then on the second one of that the only thing that I did for that one was select my black my true black and my true white which always helps with the printouts I would say for every printout that you do whatever you personally feel is the, the truest black on that page define what that is if there is white I would definitely define what the truest white on that page is and that in itself drastically improves your printouts if you look at the eye that's where you can especially see the difference between them but the darks are darker and the, the whites are whiter but I'm still not happy frustrated of course because nothing seemed to be really working the way I wanted it to I decided I am going to change the format so as I mentioned the very first one that I did was a photocopy the rest of these were all from a scan I thought well maybe if I try a photograph versus a scan maybe that'll work better the photograph that I took this is using my iPhone it's not even using my DSLR I just I wanted to take a quick photograph and I just wanted to test it to see if it would be any better and it is drastically better the quality of the printout is much better you can see the texture of the paper in the background of it this was just a, a very rough sort of try it out see if it works moment and then I thought okay well I'm gonna try it again 
only this time I'm going to print it out with that same cream background. And as you can see, this kind of got a lot closer to the color. Like even with these pages next to each other, you can see that the blue is actually starting to look a little more blue. It's not, it's still red, but it's not nearly as red as the other images. This is the best option out of everything that I printed out here. It would need some work. This isn't something that I would use as a print, but so of all of these, here's my original and the first printout and the last printout were probably the best runs. And again, the first printout was a direct photocopy and the last one is a photographed image. So the scans themselves I don't think it worked very well. So for the photocopy itself, I really don't mind this as much as I do all of the other iterations of this that I did. And I'm not really sure why, because this particular one is just as red as the other ones turned out. And I just feel like if it's gonna have this color off put, I guess, that at least it looks like this a lot of that quality was retained in the color copy, which is slightly ironic because I don't have any setting control over the color output whatsoever. It's just a direct copy color output. Maybe it's a better approach to work with photograph paper because it is, I think, uh, originally intended to be a photographer's printer. So maybe I would have better luck with that. I feel like maybe my printer is just not up to snuff which really sucks because printers are expensive maybe not as expensive as the ink but overall like you would expect them to function correctly and not really be this out of sync like I feel like this is just drastically different and maybe that's just my opinion I don't know what other people experience with their printers but the color shift here is so drastically different. Overall, thus far, I haven't created any reproductions of the original, which I would consider using as an official print. However, I don't consider this uh, whole process a fail. In fact, it is necessary to determine what works and what doesn't. So I'd like to think that I have successfully figured out what doesn't work. Now I can move forward and try something else. If you have any suggestions about how I can improve on my printer's output, please leave me a message in the comments below. That's it for this video. See you next time and thanks for watching.